Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another raid Shadow Legends video. So um, this is going to be a video mainly focused on faction wars and how you can start to get through to the higher end parts of the faction war game. Um, even if you haven't got the best champions, there's there's definitely ways that you can do it. So I'm going to crack on with that in a minute. Just before I do, there's been some news, great news, guys. We have got a double summoning event coming up. This is what everyone's waiting for. I'll probably get more questions about this than I do anything else. You know, when do you think the next one's coming? How long do they normally last for? How long between the next, you know, from one to the next? If I'm honest, it's pretty random. I think, um, but I think they're happening more and more often. Player and realize that this is a good kind of way to make some cash. Um, and they do kind of manage to claw back some favor from the community with this type of event I probably called this I don't know maybe a couple of weeks ago when they first or I don't know how long ago it was but when they first announced all these different events coming out and I saw there were a number of different summoning uh, chances throughout the the time frame for Tormund um, I did say I bet the one 24th to 27th is a double event <laughs> so uh, maybe I should have put some cash on that but yeah double event it's only on ancients so be aware it's only your ancient shards 24th to the 27th um, when you are summoning just make sure that there's um, so it's only these ancients these blue ones make sure that you go into the little eye and make sure that you see double summon in here so that will go to 16% for epics it will go to 1% for legendaries it doesn't feel like a lot 1% for legendaries but when I've done this before and I've had similar sort of number of shards 100 odd shards this has been when I've pulled my most number of legendaries easily, like easily. Uh, more than I've got from Sacreds, definitely. This double summoning on Ancients is the way to go. So uh, I'm sure I'll end up doing a video or some sort once that's out. Uh, I'm quite looking forward to it. I would love, I'm sure you guys who've watched my videos know, I would love to get Mountain King. I really want Mountain King. Uh, Blair Room, if you're watching, gift me a Mountain King. Uh, anyway, let's get into some faction wars. So. What I'm going to show you today is uh, obviously I can only show two different factions, and I already used some of my keys for Sacred Order, unfortunately. But and then I remembered, ah, I'm meant to be showing this off. So I'm going to show you Odrin tribes. Let me just show you the team I'm going to put in. So, like anyone else, you know, I've got a lot of legendaries in my account, but I also have got some weaker factions. So, you know, if I think about um, most of my factions are probably a legendary, a couple of epics, and then maybe one rare or you know, another epic. Odin Tribes for me is quite strong. I've got two legendaries that are both very good. I've got uh, some decent crowd control. So if I, if I take you through this team, so I've got Gerga, the, the Angor, who is, um, he was part of my offensive arena team for a long time. Uh, and he's, he's really cool, very cool champion. Um, I've still got him built in an arena sort of setup, but the main thing with him is he gives me an AOE freeze, 100% chance to land. He also gets an extra turn after it. That's not really what I care about. This freeze is massive for faction wars. Anything where you can get loads of crowd control is really strong for faction wars. Uh, and I've built him quite tanky, quite a decent amount of speed. I've then got Ignatius, who pairs up quite nicely with him, so he's in my arena team. Got frost gear on, so again, crowd control. He's got taunt, provoke, which again is crowd control. I've then got skull crusher in my team. Skull crusher, I've got in life steal gear. This is a uh, just my uh, clan boss setup, so I've not done anything different for this. But it's very tanky. Obviously, skull crusher, most people would know, but he gives ally protection and counter attack, so very useful for faction wars. And then I've got two bellowers in the team. So bellowers are inherently quite weak uh, in terms of their natural defense and, and HP. So I've built mine so they're quite tanky. So I'm gonna show these off in a bit more detail. You might have seen them from my guides, but I've got one bellower who's quite slow, not very tanky, okay HP, decent accuracy, very high crit rate and crit damage. So I've got crit damage gloves on him. I've got attack chest, attack boots. This guy is full offense. He could be my campaign farmer if I wanted to be. Um, so he is literally in there for the nukes. I've got my other bellower though, who is in there to crowd control. And crowd control, as I said in Faction Wars, is really important. So he's got a stun set on. You'll see when we get into the fights how important this is. 
So he is not crazy tanky. Still got a high crit rate, but lower crit damage. And he's got things like defensive chests on, uh, speed boots. So he, I want him to go often and hit that uh, crowd control as often as possible. If I think about my team, we've got one, two, three people in this team with crowd control. One out and out nuke. One strong hitter. And then somebody that's kind of like team support. And this is one of my better teams for Faction Wars, I'd say, because of the amount of variation I've got. I don't have a healer and I don't have a reviver. So I have to control the, the enemy waves. So, so far, I could go back and probably freestyle that one, but I'm not going to do it today. You really need a healer or lifesteal gear to be able to freestyle the bosses. But let's go into stage 18. So, first time at it, um, I put Bellower as my lead because I get the speed. I could put Ignatius as my lead and give myself more defense. But I prefer the speed boost. That's quite a nice little buff for Bellower. So, and if you if you look at these guys, if you hold down left click on these guys, you see what you're up against. So, you see how stacked with defense a lot of these people are and HP. Um, you can also see their speeds. So, you know, most of them are at least sort of four four and a half to five k defense minimum. See someone like a Seeker, five and a half k. Yeah, so you kind of get a good feel for what you're up against here. You also get a feel for what uh, affinities you've got. I don't have masses of subs for my faction war teams. I've pretty much got five to six players per faction war team. All of a similar sort of level of build as this. Not all of my teams are all 60s. I've got several teams. Actually, my Sacred Order team would have been a good one to show because I've got in that team only one 60, the rest are 50s. And that pretty much determines how far I can get through the the level of stages really you see here first wave i've got um, my girder going fastest so he's going to freeze the wave which means i get immediate crowd control i then decide who's going to be my biggest threat and because i know the champions quite well i would want to take out this lure here this lure because um, she does a lot of damage i don't need to put on counter attack here because these guys are all frozen up so i'll just go in and get a swing i then start laying in with my bellowers so I've got the option to over decrease attack and defense or decrease speed I'm going to do the attack and defense first because I know my other bellowers come in look here we've got one two stuns off that's pretty normal to get one or two stuns per hit and then throw in my HP burn so every time they they kind of waken they're going to take a bit more damage throw in my decreased speed see some see the damage that bellower did absolutely nukes um, they're all going to be burning up and I'm definitely going to get another turn here I can actually just go in and start wailing on the, on the one who's got the freeze on because this guy does more damage to people that are frozen and now what I want to start doing is just looking at turn meters and saying who do I need to take out first this guy's going to go first let's try and take him down and Bellower I'm just going to go AoE I'm going to save this skill now for the second set of waves so I don't need to go full on crazy let's have a shot at this guy it's definitely these these mobs are definitely weaker see that damage um, since they've made the nerfs so anyone who's kind of been avoiding faction wars for a while you should you should revisit it firstly you get some good rewards from it secondly the glyphs are really really helpful uh, and actually I don't think it's a bad set of content now that it's a bit more balanced it's still hard at this sort of level what I would have liked actually is to have got my freeze back for this next wave um, so I probably played that badly I, I could have played it so that I made sure this guy had an extra turn instead of clearing like, clearing him out like that so I probably want to take probably want to take out this dude I'm going to put my counter attacks up now so I don't have my freezes on I am going to try and slow them all down Four, oh, that's good I'm going to provoke into Ignatius so he can, he can take the hits two provokes up and then I'm going to decrease their attack and defense so nice thing about having AoE A1s like these Bellowers is when we got this counter attack up it just allows me allows me to absolutely nuke them back but the provokes going into Ignatius he's tanky anyway I now don't need to use this I'm in a good shape with this wave so I'm going to save this for the final wave and I'm just trying to pick people up. I don't know this guy's not, not going to do the sort of craziest hits. This guy's stunned. I don't need to deal with him. This guy's frozen, so I don't need to deal with him. So I'm just going to go in on this 
last one on the end. Save his, decrease attack for the final wave. Keep going on her. Nearly dead. See you later. Um, still frozen up, so I'll take this Paragon out first. Actually, no, I'm going to take... I'll take a hit at the Frozen Girl because this guy hits harder on Frozen people. But he hits that hard. I used to have him tuned up so that he'd actually hit really hard. Um, it was a lot of fun, but I've kind of changed him back so he's a bit more tanky now. So, work our way through this wave, no problems. You see, I've got no healer in my team, but I've come to the final wave full health. It's purely because I've got all this CC. Now, I'll throw the CC on the last wave. Going in with the nukes. I probably want to get rid of this blind seer first because she can resurrect people. Don't need to use my counter attack yet. Now we're going with the decrease attack and defense. Decreased defense is huge in faction wars when you get to these later stages. You saw when I showed you the portraits early, you know, when you when you're up against everybody that's 5k defense, you really need to get rid of some of that defense off of them. So it's, it's a massive thing. Um, probably from a counter attack look up this time. Try and stop their skills being available. Got it on one, two. Throw in the taunts. This is flowing quite nicely. Again, go for more skill cooldowns. Can I take out the Blaine Seer? Yeah, she's gone. That's good. Now, obviously, they start to have a go, but we're in such good shape already that they can't really do a lot. Especially when they do that. If she's got an AoE, it's going to just get all my AoEs going back. And that should be stage 18 clear and free start. So it's definitely, definitely easier than it was. Uh, so five minutes, you know, it's not like they're short rounds. I did watch um, RTZ on stream last night. He cleared stage 21 of, um, what was it? Sacred Order. So he's got a lot of the unkillable champs. And yeah, it took him 30 minutes to do it, but fair play, I've not seen anyone. I've, I've, I've only seen two or three people complete that stage, so good effort. So this one, there's going to be a lot of taunts, HP burns. This guy is just a general nuisance, but I don't have any... So I've got weak affinities to the Kalias, uh, just this guy, but this team still feels pretty strong for it, so it should be okay. So stage 19, ooh, don't want this fella hitting me. That this is just such a great opener you know if you've got anyone obviously that's about as insane as it gets for an ability but there's plenty of champs out there with uh, you know multiple stuns or um, yeah free freezes or sleeps any of that sort of stuff just and if you don't have champions that do it naturally with their abilities like these bellowers don't do it naturally then you just want to build in stun sets or build in day sets or any way that you can Provoke sets, you know, any way you can get your guys to be better at trolling the waves, you want to be putting it on there. Provoke, yeah, I probably should. I don't want to go risky at level 19. I'm sure these hit pretty hard. This guy out. I mean, everyone in my team is pretty tanked up. And that's why I tend, even the, the offensive guys, I tend to build people pretty tanky. See these stun sets, it just it just helps you control the wave so much. You've got you know one less person coming at you every time. It just is so much better. You'll see, you know, if I I'll show you another day my you know, I've got like my demon spawns, they're nowhere near as strong as these guys, but I've still got two of them in stun sets, one of them in a provoke set, which means that the mobs aren't attacking my my nukers. That's what you need. You need to keep your nukers doing what they do best. So that's round wave one done. No real worries here on health. Hopefully, yeah, I've got my freeze back up. So I just see the way I just made that round last a bit longer. I didn't use all my special abilities. What we got here? Three septimeters. Ugh. Don't want to get hit by those. I've got all of my main abilities back up. And it's a kind of rinse and repeat, really. Get the burns on. Damage. Then I put the speed on. Always go for the die that's frozen if you've got this guy. And I'll get my counter attacks up this time because I don't want to be 
Taking too much damage from these guys. Do I need provokes? No, I don't want to put it on cooldown. I want to save it for that last wave. I think I'm in good shape with this wave. Also, I don't want to kill too fast because I need to get this back, ideally, for that final wave. So, I actually start to slow down my damage here. Might just kill them all though, actually. I probably will. That's not ideal. Hopefully this doesn't kill him. Ah, <laughs> he's attacked my Nuka. So, that we're one turn off where I wanted to be, which is a bit of a problem actually, because we've got three guys here that can provoke and got counter attack, and I don't have my counter attack up. So, yeah, we're in. Might be in a bit of trouble here. But one stun off. Heard another stun really. Hoping I can get a provoke on at least. Three of these guys. Two, it's not too bad, but this guy might die now. Um th this <laughs> counterattack's actually brutal at the minute. Got the decreased defense on. Good thing is this freeze, if I get it off before someone dies, will remove all of this, so it removes one debuff. I'm gonna freeze. Which resisted it. Maybe they maybe they're immune to it actually, I think they are. Uh so these two I don't need to worry about, it's these guys which are a problem. I'm gonna put this on, it's probably too little too late really. I think these these uh, bellows are both gonna die. Yeah, there he goes. Shame is they're actually a good chunk of my damage in this as well. I'm just take Guys out. Here comes my burns, which is nice. Does a lot of damage. Be tight whether I win this this or not, though. So she's probably going to burn to death. I'll try and kill her next. Yeah, she's dead. She's going to be dead from burns. It's just these guys. Got a massive heal there. I don't know what that was from. Might not do this. This guy's in life still gear, so he might be a kind of saving grace for me that he kind of heals up often. Can we get a kill here? He's down, so it's just all all on this guy now. No point me putting that on. Just I'll go for the nukes. I'm guessing they only get counterattacked when they get hit. No. Maybe it's just on cooldown then. The, the good thing here for me as well is that they're on a weak affinity to me. But it's still going to be tight. Plus, all of these provokes, this guy drops the provoke for me. Uh, his natural ability is to drop that provoke. But this is not looking good. I think I'm probably going to fail here. I do have his unkillable up, but there's no point in using it just yet. If I can get one of them down, then I've got a chance. A bit of a crit, really. I think I've got one more turn without needing that unkillable. Maybe another one. Oh, I needed to die. This is a risky business. Okay, he's gone, that's good. So I think I just outbeat him here. I'm gonna throw up my unkillable. I'm actually, that was a, just a waste. I'm just gonna use it straight away again. Where am I? Oh, oh I need a big hit. Ah, oh, brutal. Anyway, um, so. It gives you a feel for it. I'm going to try stage 19 again off camera, but it gives you a feel for the way I've built the teams. I'll quickly show you, just for info really, um, a couple of other teams that I use. So I tend to now keep a few of the guys in the vaults, but um, I've got any full teams out here. Orcs are a good one. So I've got Warlord, so I've actually got a load of, of decent champs in Orcs, but Warlord gives me shielding and healing. 
two row bars with crazy amount of stuns between them. Seer is my damage. And then I generally use Vrask or Zargala depending on how hard it is. But Vrask gives me more healing or Zargala gives me um, like AoE defense down. This is a really strong team. I could probably get myself through to at least sort of stage 19 or so with them. Um, Demon Spawn team is also quite good. So this is another example of somebody that she doesn't hit particularly hard. She's built okay. She's not built very well really. The main thing about her is she's built in a stun set. So she's got an A1 which attacks all enemies. That's what I want from my stun person. Her other attack is attacks all enemies. So I've put her in a stun set because it just helps me get through the waves. And then I've got someone like an Umbral who is basically for wave control. Uh, and then there's my other demon spawns. I've got a couple sitting in the vault because you can play with them from the vault now. Uh, Narzana who is a kind of tank port. And Azure, who is kind of there for nukes and turn meter control. So she's just kind of built for speed and damage. So kind of just, hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview. Um, if you've got any questions or you want me to do any kind of particular factions or, or something a bit different around this type of video, let me know. Otherwise, I've been Hell Hades. Catch you soon.